25th road to the final four continues tonight from the palace of Auburn Hills in Auburn Hills, Michigan. The Kent State Golden Flashes against the Pittsburgh Panthers first round in the Oakland bracket. And later this evening, fourth seeded Kansas takes on 13th seeded Bradley. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. Bill, which team has the advantage and why? Well, Pittsburgh's so powerful. They've got great rotations up front. They've got to get Gray involved. Nate Gerwig, on the other hand, has got to play big, stay out of foul problems for Kent State. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. You'll see the uh, Kent State lineup on the left side. Gerwig, Mike Scott, Jay Youngblood, DeAndre Haynes, and Armin Gates, and for Pitt. Aaron Gray, LeVon Kendall, two of the bigs. Antonio Graves gets to start in the backcourt along with Ronald Ramon and Carl Krauser. This game brought to you in HD TV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. Jamie Dixon in his third year as the head coach at Pitt. And Jim Christian, a former Pitt assistant, is in his fourth year as the head coach at Kent State. Kent State, the champions of the MAC. Pitt out of the Big East, David Hall, John Caldwell, Tom Eads, the officiating crew. We are underway. And Vern Lundquist, Kent State coach. Ramon to Krauser. A Pitt team that was in the Big East final against Syracuse last week. Won their first three games to get there. Here's Antonio Graves. Left side, first shot of the game. Good. Wow, huh? They ran a double screen for a jumper out top. Ends up in Graves' hands. That medium game that we've seen as a lost start. Two bounce and knock it down. DeAndre Haynes, the senior, 6'2", 185, a homecoming for him. He is from Detroit. Here's Youngblood, also from Detroit. And the entry pass. Back outside, jumper taken. Jay Youngblood. Here's Krauser of Pitt. Looks inside for Gray. There's Graves. In the hands of Antonio Graves, Krauser. And his spacing got jammed up on a kick out pass from Gray. Ron Kendall was being fronted. Now he cuts. Finds the open man, Krauser, for two more. How about the presence of mind? LeVon Kendall, nice reverse pivot as he dove to the rim to find his partner. Head opens up the 4-0 lead in the first minute and a half. Here's Haynes going right. Vern Haynes and I think Youngblood have to put it on the deck and ring the bell from deep as well. And on cue, Jay. Outstanding performer all year long and playing well comes stretch time. Jay Youngbud from Southfield High in the Detroit area. Kendall, right side. And look at the help of Youngbud. They really jam things up, but you better cover. Ramon from outside, cans another. That's for three. Uh, that's the difference in this team. I think Ramon, Ronald's been able to run the point, put Krauser off the ball, and they both can beat you with the dribble. That really did make a difference when they decided to make the switch and put Krauser at the shooting goal. I think it takes advantage of Krauser's toughness and his ability to get free and also to make big shots. Haynes goes left. There's a jumper taken by Armin Gates. He had a torrid time in the torrid, that is, not horrid, in the MAC tournament. He was 7 11 from outside. Here's Gray on the door. How about the catch? People don't realize with that big body how well he runs. He gets down the floor, Vern. Perfect start for Pitt. 4 of 4. They lead 9 3. Well, Vern Lundquist, uh, you know, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Watch the big fella get the puppies up and down. He's percolating. No Olympic gold here, but watch the catch, the softness of the hands, able to let it nestle in, and then the presence to deliver. Gerwig could not recover. They didn't help the big fella on Kent State protect against Gray. Had a perfect start for Pitt. Four field goals, three assists on those four. Now the Golden Flashes. DeAndre Haynes, MAC Player of the Year. First Kent State player to ever be so honored. Here's Gerwig off the mark. Now that's how tall Gray is. He did not even elevate any influence. Mike Scott got the loose ball. Here's Haynes with a high pick from 
Gerwig, but there's Gray and Kendall again and, inside. And a nice job going underneath by Graves to recover. Now Gerwig just muscles his way. There's not much he can do. At the other end, Krauser. Ramon wants it. Back to Krauser. Nice. Kick in the corner. Yes. Wide open look. Nope. Rebound in the hands of Kent State. Jay Youngblood had it. Now Haynes. Now Haynes can get to the rim. Look at the help by Gray. And he just has a presence. Again, he doesn't have to elevate and push hard off the floor. He just reads it and gets himself to the basketball. And you can do some things defensively. You can gamble when he got the great negator in the back. Aaron Gray, who would have thought this two years ago, huh? When he checked, checked in weighing better than 300 pounds, he's lost about 40. Now off the bench, Smith is on Omni Smith, number five. And Warzinski, who had a terrific Mac final in the win over Toledo. And you know what? This is a good move. Warzinski, even though he's posting up now, he can come outside and take Gray away. And the three is good. DeAndre Haynes cans one from long range. And that cuts it to 9-6. Here's Gray coming out with a high screen. Kendall looks inside. Browser finds it inside. There's the cut and the kick out. Nice ball movement. Antonio Graves, nice pass underneath. Two more. And how about the way he switched to the left hand? Kendall. He cuts well. He's always available. Good cross court action and unselfish play. Levon Kendall out of Vancouver, British Columbia. There's that little shuffle gun. Now, this is what I, I was this he can move him around great. Won't be able to jam things up as much. See? And he can make that shot. Warzinski goes left. Tommy Smith almost lost it. Seven in the shot clock. There's the fake. Young blood. That's for three as well. No. Long rebound, chase down. Omni Smith for three. The lefty can't get it. And a foul underneath. Krauser to Kendall. 4-2. A five-point pit lead. CBS Sportsline is your destination for complete tournament coverage. Get bracket updates, video highlights, and expert analysis for each tournament game at cbssportsline.com. Ball inbound to Warzinski, the sixth man of the year in the Mid-American Conference. Fields and Young are on the floor now for the Pitt Panthers. Here's DeAndre Haynes, Mike Scott. Back it goes to Youngblood. Sam Young is out defending him on the perimeter. Warzinski battles inside. Youngblood in the corner. Nice penetration. Oh, beautiful. Their perimeter players are terrific at putting it down, getting to the 10, and very clever with the dribble as well. And Warzinski being played down low, he can do some damage because Kendall's on him now, not great. Omni Smith picks up Levance Fields. And at the point, there's a steal by Kent State. DeAndre Haynes rejected cleanly by Levon Kendall. What a reaction. Levance Fields got away with a carry. Krauser couldn't take the hit and finish that trip. At the other end, Kent State forcing the issue. Here's DeAndre Haynes. Now too deep. Let's take a look at LeVon Kendall's block. I thought it was clean. Uh, it was gorgeous. I think on the way up, no question about it. You can use that glass as well as long as it's on the way up. Now, this is a guy that burst on the scene in South America with 40 points against the USA team down there in the summer games and all of a sudden he's one of those big players that Pitt develops by that they do everything well mm -hmm. you know it's, it's they jump out at you whether it's defense shot blocking you've seen him dive and pass and he can score as well Kevin Warzinski gets one of two at the line and it's a two-point game 11 to 9 now Fields comes right there's the trap Omni Smith and DeAndre Haynes Pretty good foot speed, don't they, in that half-court trap? Strictly man. Fields and Graves. Now here's Sam Young, number 23. Graves, quick foul call. 
You, know, you mentioned Young. He's a guy that can really do some damage quickly on the floor. But again, the ability to use to dribble when things aren't going well. Substitution now for Kent State. Armin Gates is back on the floor, number 25. Jim Christian chatting with. Uh, it's a pretty good open shooter, too. Looks down early in the, in the offense for three point shots. Bowser foul is called on DeAndre Haynes, number 23. Well, you've been around as long as, well, not us, Krauser. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there was nowhere to go, but he knew he could get to the foul line. Yeah. He's, uh, well, Carl Krauser is years. not, he's not a youngster. No, no. He's a 24 year old senior at Pitt. I told him one night, I think you're older than me. I've been calling <laughs> your game so long. Well, it's behind uh, Brandon Knight learned the game and passed it on to others. Fields, for example, Ronald Ramon, certain toughness about it. the kid from the Bronx. Had a couple of matches as a boxer. 2-0. and oh. Yeah. And then gave it up. Obviously, he's not married, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no one's undefeated. <laughs> Sam Young with a the penetration. There was Warzynski defensively and... Kendall off the glass. Nice play. You know, he knows how to turn his body and protect the ball beautifully. DeAndre Haynes comes across. The senior out of Detroit. Nice. Again, Kendall. Did you see him cover? Smart on both ends of the floor. Another international player with a flair for the game. Here just turns, gives him the cold shoulder, which we've gotten often on trips. Finishes strong. 13 to 9. Isaac Knight is off uh, the bench now, wearing number four for Kent State. Here's Fields. Pitt has some people that can respond off the bench. Young is one of them. This mm -hmm. is this one. And Fields, one of those guys that out of New York that really knows how to play the game. Certain toughness about it. Beautiful entry pass to Warzynski. Really a nice pass. It sure was. Warzynski clever too because he caught Kendall, had him spinning. A pretty good defender he made this move against. Right here, just holes off, and this is a lot of coaching. Get the weight, make sure the guy can't defend. You see, Kendall lost his balance, and you know Jim Christian's team is a very smart team offensively. Played to their strengths. Now, oh, Warzynski is a 75% free throw shooter. That's his second miss tonight. Mincy comes on now. Jordan Mincy, a 5'10 freshman from Memphis. Kendall is out with two fouls for a pit. Jamie Dixon's squad. Left side. DeAndre Haynes, number 23. Mincy in the backcourt. Looks back at his coach, Jim Christian. They've moved Haynes to the off guard. Now he gets the, uh, the ball in his hands. Gates, jumper. And a nice job by Gray to seal out. Morzinski goes up and grabs the ball. And uh, Gray could not get out on Morzinski to help on that screen. They got an open look because of that. So pretty clever move on the other end. Sam Young puts it in the hands of Carl Krause. Fields, a little sloppy. And the foul is going to be called on Kent State. Foul on Knight. Time call. Update time. Greg Clark and Seth in New York. We'll get you back to your game after we check in with what's happening in Dallas. North Carolina State and the California Golden Bears are all tied in the first half. What do we look for in this game? Well, Leon Poe and Devon Harden, two outstanding front court players for California, will really try to assert themselves inside. North Carolina State has been banged up in terms of some key personnel. Eptimov has been hurt, Cameron Brenneman, both perimeter players, but they play a disciplined three-point shooting style offense, which is always tough to defend. Yeah, Poe already has four points. You know he's going to get his. The thing about North Carolina State, they need to hit three-pointers. If they're not hitting threes, they don't have a plan B. And you saw there, Clark, Devon Harden just pick up a second foul in early concern for Cal. He sure is, because he's a real presence inside defending the basket. And right away, North Carolina State able to attack the rim with Harden on the bench with two fouls. This is Atlanta region action taking place in Dallas. NC State, the number 10 seed in the Atlanta region, and California, the number 7. Turnover for the Bears there. Little out of sync. Move on to Philadelphia, where 
They are just underway, Albany and UConn. And uh, look quick, the number 16 seed is leading a number one seed. <laughs> Stop it now. Stop it now. We'll have that upset I've been looking for. It's going to happen one day. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is going to happen, though. And, uh, you know, maybe UConn, I think UConn coming off that uh, quarterfinal loss to Syracuse in the Big East Tournament. I'm guessing they've been hearing from their coach a little bit about that game, and I expect them to come out and really play intensely. Well, they've already turned it over three times, have the Huskies. Open shot for the Great Danes, no good, but the second chance opportunity. And that's a four-point lead now for the Great Danes. Stop it now. Stop it now. Great Danes come off of a terrific 21-10 and 10 season out of the America East. UConn's won 16 of its last 18 games. Albany, 11 of its last 13. These teams are used to winning games. And Jamar Wilson, a terrific little guard for the Great Danes. He can get it off the dribble. He can shoot the three. And he's a tough matchup. By the way, in case you think these schools don't know each other, they met once before in 1921. <laughs> UConn won by a score of 29 to 20. In Dayton, Ohio, George Mason and Michigan State. Now, we're sure these teams have missed a shot here and there, just not many. No, they both are shooting well over 60% from the floor. This is a high-octane offensive game thus far. Michigan State has not been solid defensively this year, and that's a brick by Paul Davis from deep and a turnover so it's been up and down for both teams here in the early going all right we will keep track of those games for you meanwhile let's get you back to auburn hills michigan where kent state and pittsburgh are doing battle and we'll rejoin Vern lundquist and bill rafter air ball by antonio graves a 7-0 run just answered by gerwig so it's 18 to 11 now pitt leading over Kent State with 10.40 to go first half. This is nearly a backyard ball. These two universities separated by just over 100 miles. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh and Kent know a lot about one another. And I think the Kent impact has been the rotation. The young boy, one of those guys that can really slash but get hit it outside. Gerwig a little too strong, and the rebound comes down. Here's Ramon. Fields. Mm. The three. But Ramon is really he's grown beautifully as the point guy. A great decision there. Give the open look. Well, LeVance Fields inspired by his shot. He picks up DeAndre Haynes at the timeline. Underneath, nice bomb. A foul is called on Sam Young. 21-11 as Kent having trouble finding the basket. Two of eight from three-point range and 25% as well overall. Only one assist, and they trail by 10. Now, Irwig is going to go to the line. He's a fifth-year senior, as we mentioned. The last time these two teams met was in the NCAA tournament in 2002. Wonderful run for Kent State. They made it to the Elite Eight. Irwig was a starter on that team. Has had uh, injury problems since. But he is the only man left from that uh, Elite Eight team of 2002. Yeah, what a great run. Nice check out here. Stan Heath with a terrific year. He's hung in, and the reward was another opportunity here. Let's see if they go to the like a little bit of a zone here. Two, three. Yep. I think fatigue is be, would be a factor in this game. Got to keep his troops fresh and out of foul problems. Force the outside shot. Bring it back outside with 14 on the shot clock. Antonio Graves, Levance Fields, Ramon. Ball tipped by DeAndre Haynes. Five on the shot clock. Baseline jumper. Good. This kid is tough. I mean, he just comes in and fills it up. He's very comfortable coming off the bench. Uh, started in last week when uh, Levon Kendall was ill and had a great ball game. And the woman in the back would just pay his dues. There's Gerwig battling underneath, and Gray is a big presence there. Well, when in doubt, just put it on the deck. They get in the cracks here, the pinch. You just can't close out. A little nylon on uh, by Young. Well, it's good, solid basketball. 23-12 with 9.06 to go. First half of play. Another substitution now. Mincy Jordan. Mincy, the freshman out of Memphis, is on for Gates. Let's see one of those guys who's got a really ragged guy. Can push it in transition. There he is. Right after. Knows what his job is, too. Under nine to go, first half. 
This is the first meeting between these two teams since that uh, just mentioned battle in the tournament. Kent State beat Pittsburgh and moved to the Elite Eight. Oh, but the strength there to discard. Morano with the ability to get rid of his man and have body control. That's a tough combination. 25-12, a 14-3 pit run. Orzinski getting ready to come back now for Kent State. A nice show, and Curry never saw it. He could have slipped to the rim. Young Bud, back up three. Nope. Well, they just can't find the basket. Uh, and if they don't get an offensive rebound, they've been struggling. Well, the only way you can stop him maybe has that forearm. Yes. But this is good solid basketball. And that right arm now, a lot of times you're going to get that called against you. Just wasn't in an obvious spot. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, the strength to just gather yourself and still make the shot. The beneficiary of a no call. Kozer. Kozer and Graves are on with Ramon, and there's his three-pointer. Oh, they grab control of this ball game. Well, this kid can play off the ball, but the interesting thing. He sacrificed to make them a better team. A quick timeout. Jim Christian not happy the way things are going. Jim Christian wants to chat with his team. 7.52 to go first half. Pitt has hit 73% from the field. They're 11 of 15. Contrast that with Kent State's 4 of 18, 22%. Jamie Dixon in his third year is the... Uh, Head man, he was an assistant to Ben Howard. And, and they've done a terrific job on the defensive end, which is one of the things that Ben, he espoused tough man-to-man -man defense. Jamie's taking it and to even another level. Young blood. Look inside. There's Scott. Off the glass and good. Don't you love it after a timeout? You get a nice call. The guys are more active going to the rim with an opportunity to get the easy one. That's a margin to 14. Yeah, just too big. Look at this. Wojcicki oh, at a disadvantage. It's like playing Wilt. <laughs> nice. And a steal. Hold Here on. Here goes Sam Young. Sam is really young when you can do that. Uh, the defensive pressure on the perimeter. Get your poise back now, Kent State. Run your stuff. Wojcicki. Gray with a rebound. The one and done, huh? Here's Ramon. Jumper. Everything is going for Pitt. Now they're, now they're back on their heels and the pull up. What you're looking for now is get to the free throw line at some point. You know, just do something that initiates contact. Even if you charge, put the pressure on the officials a little bit. 20 point lead for Pitt. Ooh. And a turnover. As we go to break. We're back at Auburn Hills in Michigan. Big East troubled day yesterday. Perfect so far today, 3-0. and And thus far in the tournament, two 12 seeds have won. Texas A&M and Montana. We've got a 5 versus a 12 in action right now, and the 5 is pounding the 12. And proud of it is 10 assists and only one turnover for Pitt. I mean, solid basketball, very efficient with the ball. Uh, size of factor as Ray came out of the game well. LeVon Kendall as well, although he is the two fouls now. Both of them resting at this point. LeVance Fields comes up. Hudson is in. Doyle Hudson, number 21. Here's Fields and Ramon. You can relate to this right now, the weave. Yeah, I can. <laughs> both, or, or, both of us can, yeah. as a matter of fact. Just looks like it's 1960s basketball. Stuff still works, no question about yes, it. Yes, indeed. That one tipped out of bounds. It'll be Kent State ball. Now, Jim Christian's got to really get his guys just mentally attuned. You know, keep playing, keep competing. The team sometimes get a little fat. Satisfaction sets in. Maybe don't concentrate as, as well. He starts just making some shots. Jim Christian, the fourth-year head coach. Yeah. Oh, uh, another turnover. And one zig to Scott. Never yep. thought he was going to zag. 
Hayes with the right idea, just a little too high. Jim Christian was an assistant at Pitt. We mentioned that under Ralph Willard. He was also his high school coach. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Well, they were great coach because at Holy Cross did a wonderful job. Bucknell beat them this year for the Patriot Championship. Krauser finds Ramon. Sam Young. 5.20 to go, first half, and your perfect tip first half. 14 of 18. And here's the jump start. 14 of 19. Ball chased down by Mike Scott. Jumper. Yes! How about that? That's the way to push the basketball, get it in the correct hands. Armin Gates for three. At the five-minute mark of the first half, 34-17. And Gates a very good open shooter. Byrne really gets down and ready. Stepped right into that shot. Little pin-down foul, I think. It may have been Doyle down there. Doyle Hudson picked it up, number 21. 4.48 to go in the first half. Aaron Gray back on now for Pittsburgh. And Hudson got the hook after the quick foul. DeAndre Haynes, Jim Christian telling us uh, yesterday, the only point guard he has ever had. And that's something high praise. The way he's been able to run the team. There's Gates for three. This one will not fall. And Aaron Gray with a rebound to Pitt. He can't get around him. He's so big. I just can't get over how much he has improved this year. Oh, it's just incredible. Most improved player in the league. You know, he's won with a national award. He's got to be in the hunt. And uh, looking for the timeout, Gray, but they get the, see the possession arrow. Hell ball, possession arrow favors Kent State. Possession. You ever want to see the jump ball come back? You know, it, it, it's the rules, so it doesn't really bother me, but yes. You know, you can have a clinic for the officials to learn how to throw it up. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's really the key. I mean, it, that's almost incomprehensible, isn't it? Well, <laughs> you know, it, it's a shame at the end of games when the game is won or yes. lost by the position. Yes. That, that's when it hurts. Right? The team does a great job defensively, stops the club, goes on the floor, and all of a sudden they get possession back. But you got to play it the way it is. Haynes to Warzynski. There you go. He can knock him down, and that's sort of in rhythm. Hayes trying to find one of his teammates to get it going. They need some stops now. Only 14. 21 points for Warzynski in that MAC championship game last week against Toledo. Six nothing run now for Kent State. Krauser finds Gray. The double comes from Isaac Knight. Good job, and they go travel. Oh, they got the travel. Well, energy exhibited from the Golden Flashes. Update time. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis in New York. We'll bring you back to Auburn Hills after we check in on what's happening. First in Dayton, Ohio, where George Mason and Michigan State are continuing their shootout. It's a 30 to 28 lead for George Mason as they approach two minutes to play in the first half, Seth. Yeah, a, a very offensively efficient game for both teams. And one concern for George Mason coming into the game, you see the big guy in the middle, number 55, had two sprained ankles, which seemed to bother him during the conference tournament. Hasn't been bothering him here. And Mason looks very comfortable in this type of game, getting up and down a lot of scoring. All right, in Philadelphia, Albany continues to lead UConn by a score of 15 to 13. They are under nine minutes to play. Albany has been aided greatly by one turnover after another after another by the Huskies. UConn has been very untidy with the ball. And as a result, Albany gaining confidence. Actually, they should be up by a little more with all of the extra shots they've been able to get. But that's Marcus Williams knocking down a triple to give the Huskies a one-point lead. Well, you get the sense that if UConn just takes care of the ball, squeezes the orange, they'll be able to explode out to a double-digit lead. And you'd prefer to see UConn play tidy ball, is that right? Yes, tidy <laughs> ball. I, yes, sir. I understand. Albany, the number 16 seed in the Washington Regional, hanging with UConn for the moment. And in Dallas, North Carolina State and California. You guys get a feel for this game yet? Well, you know what? These teams are evenly matched. It's a 7 seed versus a 10 seed. And... North Carolina State, despite having a couple of key guys playing less at less than 100% physically, is playing their game. They do a good job defensively. Foul trouble to Devon Harden up front is 
allowed um, North Carolina State to be All able right. to get to the rim. We'll keep track of that game. Let's get you back to Auburn Hills. Kent State in Pittsburgh. Bert Lundquist and Bill Rafter. Strong move by Kevin Morzinski toward the basket. Off the glass. An 8 nothing run now by Kent State. Morzinski has six. And a 20-point lead has been cut to 12. 3.05 to go in the first half. Pitt and Kent State, five seed against the 12 here in the Oakland bracket. Skip fast. Krauser, air ball. Warzinski. And a foul is going to be called on Gray. Coming up on singular at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Seth Davis. We'll take you out for a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. We'll get you caught up on all the latest tournament news and a singular Naismith update. That's on singular at the half. We are 250 away. And it's good to see Warzinski out of the gate now. He pumped fake and put it on the deck. And now he's the guy dragging Gray away from the rim that gives some openings for penetration and kicks. Youngblood out of the double team finds the man in the corner. Armin Gates. And timeout Pittsburgh. A single-digit lead now for Pip. And Vern Warzinski's over here. Who's got to follow him? Well, too many circles. We got the big guy, Gray, and all of a sudden the drive, draw, get the puppies organized, and a little nylon, and a little life in Kent State right now. Solid comeback. Terrific ball distribution. 11 unanswered points now, and some energy displayed defensively by the Golden Flashes of Kent State. Graves, Sam Young, Levance Fields, Aaron Gray, and Krauser on the floor for tip. And look at this nice slip to the goal. Oh, boy. Say goodnight. Yeah, Warzinski oh. came out, and Gray was there unopposed. Good night, Alice. <laughs> oh, what a good screen. And all of a sudden, you got a little guy who didn't want to go down and play with the big boys. 158 to go first half. Four assists now for Krauser in the ball game. That's a shame. Youngblood turned it over. How about this though? Right, a little slip to the goal, and all of a sudden, you don't want anybody of that size matching up with Gray. Terrific look. And Gray has had his troubles the last few trips. Uh, they changed the look. And that's why you sit on that bench. You know, what's gonna work? You gotta get him involved. A little side pick and roll. Solid play. Fields has it. Here's Kendall back on the floor with two fouls. Krauser with a pass underneath. LeVon Kendall can't handle it. Here comes Kent State. They trail by 20. And this one will not fall on the reverse layup. How about Hayes with the blow by? Oh, my goodness. The lingerie on the deck. Kendall didn't even see him go by. Pitt muscles his way as Krauser goes up. Pitt was up by 20, and Kent State went on an 11 to nothing run. And the margin right now is 11 with 1.14 to go. Mike Scott picked up that last foul. Boy, speed off the dribble, huh? Big guys are almost unprotected trying to control the perimeter. Well, Cosmo will inbound. Sends it out to Antonio Graves. Keith Benjamin, by the way, ill, not clean tonight. Off the bench, and that's another turnover. That's six for Pitt. Well, not a good one either. A little bit forced by them. Unforced by the opponent. And Kendall comes out, tried to ride him a little bit with those two fouls. This way he doesn't play the defensive end. Kendall out. Sam Young back on the floor for Jamie Dixon's Pitt Panthers. Five-seeded Pitt. Twelve-seeded Kent State. Pitt has turned over five times in the last five minutes. Remember, at one point, they had ten assists and one turnover. Yeah, they valued the ball very well. Eh? The defense, as you know, they stepped up by Kent State. Warzinski just does hang. No, he doesn't. At the other end, off the glass, beauty. Now, Warzinski should have let it go over. It had been tipped. He wouldn't have had the turnover. Well, you seen that the last night, huh? Yes. San Diego State. Not sure whether it was a backcourt violation. Indiana winning that one last night. Now West in San Diego, or in Salt Lake City, right? And uh, Warzinski has Gray lost track of the ball. 
Then we'll play for the final shot. Shot clock is off. We've got 10 seconds to go. He's really got to check out Gray at the end of this. Fields backs up. Cans it. At the buzzer. No, not quite. End of the half, 40 to 27. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching our 25th Road to the Final Four on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Powerade. Southwest Airlines. Taco Bell. And by Chevrolet. We welcome you back to the Palace at Auburn Hills. Let's break it down statistically at the half. A 13-point lead and Pitt hitting 17 of 25. Bill, we began the evening talking about the advantage that Pitt had. Uh, that height advantage has paid dividends. I think Jim Christian talked about it, too, at halftime. The, the big guys, uh, Gray and Kendall, are five for five. And, uh, you know, when you think of this team, the big guys are the impact and targets. But Ronald Ramon, a guy who has stepped it up and done a nice job orchestrating the offense and on occasion knocking some shots down gathers the puppies drills the deep one this is the strength we alluded to earlier able to take that hit and get into the lane this time he's had a solid game but it has been the size and the impact against Kent State Panthers jumped out to a 20 point lead Kent State went on an 11 to nothing run and got it back to single digits right now it is a 13 point margin and Pitt will have the ball to begin the second half. Antonio Graves will inbound. Ronald Ramon, four of four from the field. He's picked up by DeAndre Haynes. High screen from LeVon Kendall gets the ball. Back outside, Ramon. Nice edge. Oh, pass. beauty. <laughs> How about that? Well, Krauser, a compliment as a scoring guy. Uh, can play the point. What an entry pass. So once again, LeVon Kendall just knows how to hold this guy off, catch, and go to the tip. Carl Krauser with five assists now. And here's a rebound by Gray and a foul, cheap foul in the backcourt. Yeah, that's Gerwig, you don't need that. But how about this entry? Just that, use that derriere, extend, and the outside entry pass. There's no way the defense can get there. That is gorgeous basketball. Kendall inbounds. And Ramon brings it across. 15-point margin, 42-27. Here's Gray again. Look at the size to see over the top, too. Fade away. Ramon circles the world and has it fall through. Did we just do that highlight? I think we did. That was fairly similar. His pull up. Yeah, he's got strong legs. And he's perfect. Five for five. This is the first of two games in our second game tonight. The fourth seed in the Oakland bracket, Kansas, takes on Bradley out of the Missouri Valley. Gerwig a little too strong with that short jump shot. That easy with Gray Lomi. Gray with another rebound. Bowser, Ramon, Kendall, Gray, and Antonio Graves. Bring it back outside, put it in the hands of Crowder. They made great decisions, don't they? Another fine pass. Gray calls for it, gets it back. Gerwig with another foul. Boy, with his size, he's a great cloud. I mean, he, is, uh, he looms over people. A defensive rebound, and uh, this time able to catch it. And they really belly up on him. He's got good strength. What an upside in his career. Nate Gerwig has to go to the bench, the fifth-year senior from Pittsburgh, and he is replaced by Warzynski. Warzynski had played very well, too, Vernon. He gives him a different look. He moved Gray out. Ramon calls for it. Antonio Graves crosses it in. Oh, there's the cut from Graves, touched last by Kent State. Armin Gates, number 25, put a hand on it. And a 17-point lead. We played just about two minutes. 17 on the shot clock. This is a Pittsburgh team that uh, started the season at 17-0. There's Kendall. 
cleared by Gates. Now Haynes. They got a little bang on the knee. I think they give it to Gray with Wojcinski, maybe. Yes. He doesn't have to do that. He's been dominating inside. Gray second. Tough to get him upset. I like this move by Christensen. Now it forces Gray out. Others can either attack, and they got Wojcinski slipping inside after he screamed. Mike Scott, number 21. Beautiful. Oh, he did not get the roll. Good everything but. Now Ramon. Browser for three. That looks like a curve, doesn't it? Or a screwball. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> Goes left to right. It must come out of his hands just a little bit different. Or he knows the wind currents here in the Motor City. Carl Krauser for three. And Pitt has equaled its largest lead of the night. 20. Time now for our Southwest Airlines sideline report in the stands right behind the Pitt bench. Jim Dixon. His son, Jamie, is the head coach at Pitt. His daughter, Maggie, is the head coach at West Point. Army in the women's NCAA tournament. They've got a tough task this weekend. They are taking on <laughs> Pat Summit and Tennessee. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, what a tough Sunday, huh? And there is a third child, Jim Dixon's daughter, Julie, an attorney in Los Angeles. That jumper from Morzinski off the glass. And here's LeBron Kendall. How about the dad who's been here a couple of weeks? He's right. Riding the trains with regularity up to West Point and out here. With the chicken during the country and seeing his children. Krauser, little oh. shove to the clear of the way. He's, he's got strength, too. And nobody there to knock it back. Clear sailing. 49-27, nine unanswered now in the second half to Pitt. Here's Warzinski, Kendall. Double comes from Young, and a foul is called. And reach in there. Anytime you reach down, you've got to go come from the bottom. I believe that's number three, is it? Yes, I believe. Third foul. And Gray coming in for him. El Marzinski on the line. His dad, Ken, was a draft pick of the Detroit Pistons, 1970. I don't, did he play? I, I mean, he was saying, I thought so many Piston people. I know he was drafted. I don't believe he did. Yeah, I don't think so either, but uh, pretty good bloodlines. Don't forget, back in those days, there weren't as many teams when you think of it. Mm -hmm. we were 30 now, back then, gee, I'm going to think there were 16 or 17, right? When I played, there were three or four. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do remember the Syracuse Nats and the Fort Wayne Pistons. I sure do as well. Warzinski. Gets a couple, it's 49-29, 16-35 to go. Pitt and Kent State playing for the 15th time, but the first time since they met in 2002 in the NCAAs. And this Pitt team knocked out in the first round a year ago, trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. We've got Kansas coming up in our nightcap here. Recall that they were knocked out a year ago in the first round by Bucknell. That set off tremors in the yeah. flatlands of Kansas. And of course, this year it was Arkansas. Yes. Look at this kid this far to make the shot. I mean, that, that is, uh, now Mitzi had ragged him in the backcourt. Had did a pretty good job. Let him catch it. And then the ability to score. Better offense usually negates that good day. Ramon is a perfect six for six tonight. 14 points. Mincy with a give. Gates. Here's Mike Scott in the 21. Jay Youngblood. Jumper off the front rim. Well, look at the big fella just part the seas. <laughs> yeah. Orzinski had no chance to get position for the basketball. Well, look at him. Just, this is just a size basket. I'm going to slip the Saturday edition of the Daily News under his feet on that elevation, huh? 53-29, 15-20 to go. Aaron Gray, eight points, eight rebounds. And Pitt is cruising now from the corner. That's Sam Young. Here comes Carl Krauser. Pitt gets back, Krauser. Offensive foul. Time call. Pitt rolling. 
Greg, Seth, and Clark in New York with a tournament update for you. Back to Auburn Hills right after we check in on what's happening in Dayton. And George Mason is what's happening in Dayton. The Patriots have not let up since the opening tip. They've been on the attack the whole game. And Michigan State has yet to find an answer for keeping them out of the paint and keeping them from knocking down shots. Penetration, pull-up jumper, bang. Yeah, somebody better tell George Mason they're supposed to be the underdog. Remember, they don't have their best perimeter guy, Tony Skin, is suspended for one game. And uh, right now, Michigan State's on the ropes. Not a very good defensive team to spark. All right, we'll keep track of that one. Meanwhile, in Dallas, North Carolina State and Cal have been tight all day. And early in the second half, there's no change. It's the Golden Bears by two. Yeah, we know that Cal's got some pretty good big guys. But NC State has really the best big man on the floor so far in Cedric Simmons. And he's helped to get Devon Harden of Cal into foul trouble. Harden picked up his fourth foul here early in the second half and he's on the bench and without him that means Leon Poe has to do a lot of heavy lifting inside alone and typically they work best as a tandem you see here good defense by Cedric Simmons keeping Leon Poe from being able to get the kind of position he wants inside Coming up on 18 minutes to play in the second half, and Cal with a 32 to 30 lead. There really hasn't been very much between these two teams all night. No, they've been pretty close from the start. Deep three. It looked like Eptimov. So Cal with a two point lead, and they are at halftime in Philadelphia, where Albany is still hanging with UConn. The Huskies are leading it by a score of 31 to 30. Let's get you back to Auburn Hills where Kent State and Pittsburgh are battling and rejoin Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery. Kent State inbounds, trailing 53-29 with 15 minutes to go. And a little box set, down screen to a side pick and roll. They really want some good. Look at this in the passing lane. Here's Krauser. Krauser has a little, oh! the ball face gets his own miss and it's taken away by Jay Youngblood once in a while I like to see Carl look at this defense around the rim they got the little hack I like to see Krauser get in see nothing and come out even though you're in control of the game it can become a habit Youngblood's going to go to the line one of the three players from the Detroit area a homecoming for them Jay Youngblood, Mac first team. Nine 20 point games, I noticed. I mean, these kids had terrific year. Near the end of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best Chevy and American Revolution. 53 31, 14 35 to go in the ballgame. And Jamie Dixon with a little more pressure going to the three guard look. A lot of guys to handle, make decisions. Ramon Krauser, Levance Fields. A little banging inside in the paint. And Wojcicki gets tagged. Who, me? <laughs> Now they have been chest to chest, body to body. All they needed was a little music. <laughs> yeah, dancing with the stars on a different network. 53 31, 14 22. Well, that would have been a perfect trap in that corner. Back outside for Pip. In control of this ball game, they had a 23 5 run midway through the first that they gave them a 20 point lead. Kent State answered with 11 in a row. Got it down to single digits, but uh, essentially it's been all Pittsburgh from uh, the point five minutes remaining. And they've done a great job of reversing the ball, too. Nice help on the post guy. Oh, oh my gosh, it's that kind of night. Forget about it. Oh, oh, the Vance Fields for three. Now Haynes, beautiful. Very, very nicely done. That is solid basketball. Megan pay for going under. Any help, the back cut. Here's the Vance Fields, just canned that three. A 23-point difference, 13-25 to go. Winner of this game will get either Kansas or Bradley on Sunday. This is an Oakland bracket game. Top seed is Memphis. They've won. UCLA has won. Right side, Youngblood. Nice dish. Another dish. I love this team. I mean, really, they are 
uh, you know, outmatched up front and yet relentless in their pursuit. Not making shots, it's been a struggle at it, but they keep on humming. Go to mycokerewards.com slash NCAA to play Coca-Cola NCAA Championship Run 2006. Our 25th road to the Final Four. First round games underway around the country tonight. Second night of the first round games. And we'll have round two tomorrow and Sunday. As we head toward Indianapolis. And LeVon Kendall on the floor. Fortunately here with the kick. Nice trap. Pull the string a little bit. I would think Jamie's going to want some touches to the big fellas. Kendall and Gray are the bigs on the floor right now. And Kansas Bradley will play uh, the final game of our four here at the Palace at Auburn Hills. Coming next. Fields. Kendall. And a nice little trap again. Good ball reversal. On the floor and a push. Foul is going to be called on. Mincy was it down there? Yes, it was. Jordan Mincy, the 5'10 freshman. He can really get after people. So a solid defender. Fourth team foul. Ball inbounds. Antonio Graves. Omni Smith, number five. Kick out. Memphis and Bucknell have already advanced in the Oakland bracket. This foul is on Isaac Knight, number four. 12.20 to go. That is the 15th foul on Kent State. Pitt has not been able to really do a good job on their inbounds underneath their basket. They've been forced to throw it deep. Is it not screening properly? And uh, five, five seconds. Second yeah. Whoa. Now there was pressure on the ball. That's what's impressed me the most about the games thus far. The ability to get after the ball handler. And not make it easy to turn the corner. Make it tough on a pass. Now here's Mincy. Gray gets caught out on the perimeter. He does a great job showing they try and go under. He's stuck now. He's got to play one of the little right. guys. <laughs> Help on Omni Smith. Reach in from Graves. And the basket by Warzinski. Nice, nice job. It's a good penetrate. They really hung with that trip. Gosser, Gray. Back outside to Graves. Nice. Touch pass, left side. Gray for two and a foul. And they didn't ride him all the way out. Got to stay with the big guy. 11.22 to go. Pitt in control. Greg Clark and Seth in New York with an update for you in Dayton, Ohio. George Mason and Michigan State have 10-23 remaining to be played in the second half. And uh, this will raise a few eyebrows around the country. The Patriots are ahead by four. Remember, the Patriots don't have Tony Skin, their best perimeter guy, suspended for one game. They've shot around 67% in the second half. The Spartans' defense has been nowhere to be found. Penetration off the dribble by George Mason has led to that high shooting percentage. When you can get in the lane, you get good shots in the paint, or you can kick out for wide-open jump shots. And there you see... Inside penetration again by George Mason, that time with the pass. We sit here and watch these teams play, and we talk about one team doesn't have an answer for another. For everything that Michigan State has done, George Mason has had an answer, and then some. Well, basically, their answer has been attacking at the offensive end. That's where they've been really the aggressive team, and they've been the more efficient team, shooting a high percentage. And as a result, they're able to get back and get their half-court defense set pretty well. Michigan State settling for threes. All right, we'll keep track. 51-44 Patriots in the lead in Dallas. 
Cal with a four-point lead on North Carolina State, and it appears these teams have been like this throughout the night and will be like this for the final 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Very, very evenly matched teams, Greg. Very similar style, comfortable playing in the half court. Nobody really trying to put on a lot of full-court pressure, and uh, right now Rod Benson's having a real nice game for Cal, and he's kind of kept them in it while Devon Harden, a great rebounder and shot blocker for them, picked up his fourth foul early in the second half. He's been on the bench. One of North Carolina State's strength is their ability to knock down the three-point shot. So a two-possession game is nothing for them. So it's 40 to 34, California. We'll keep track of all that's happening. Let's get you back to Auburn Hills, Kent State, and Pittsburgh. And once again, Vernon Rapp. Hit by 21 with Ray at the line. And a substitution now for the Panthers. Sam Young, number 23, back on the floor. And Aaron Gray is going to get a well-deserved rest. And you know, there's a lot of coaching that goes into that development, too. The guys patting them on the backside. And big guys do a lot of repetitive drills. Warzinski trying to establish position, gets a fine block. And from the outside, Omni Smith, number five, hands the three-pointer. Uh, he's got some range, doesn't he? Can put it on the deck as well. Young man out of Chicago who played uh, for 10 games at Eastfield Community College in Mesquite, Texas. And now a foul is called. Thought we were going to get the hell ball. We do not. The foul is called on Omni Smith. Jim Christian. With a little look of uh, disbelief. 17 foul, so it's one and one. Ramon goes to the line. When you win your regular season in conference tourney, that's pretty well done. On the missed free throw. DeAndre Haynes, number 23. Michael Scott. They are an energetic bunch, this uh, group of Golden Flashes from Kent State. They got live bodies, don't they? Live legs. 59, 40, 10, 25 to go. We're almost uh, at the midway point of the second half. And for look how they pressure the ball. I mean, this, this is hard work to get out. Control your guy. Nice cut sets it up. Just trail it all the way. I believe it was Scott. You got to lead the guy somehow. Young has 10. The assist goes to LeVon Kendall. And it's a 21-point margin as we hit the midway point. Scott. Woo. Great. Scott. <laughs> the blow by. Oh boy, people stuck to the floor. A little pressure in the backcourt. Omni Smith defending Levance Fields. He comes across the timeline. And nice trap and rotation. That's good basketball. Loose ball picked up by Haynes. Gets the roll. This is terrific. I mean, they are just relentless full court pressure Jim Christian's bunch down by 17 but uh, still feisty uh, you know you're doing your right thing when you get the power forward bringing it up everybody oh the push yeah, what a shame by Haynes foul is called on Haynes with NCAA March Madness on demand you can watch live tournament games on your computer outside of your viewing area for free Sign up now at NCAAsports.com slash M-M-O-D. Uh, we saw that firsthand. Yeah, we did? Yeah. Uh, the yes. our, Google, our Google boys. <laughs> it, was on, it, it was not on your computer, was it? <laughs> no, no, you no, didn't no. bring your laptop yeah. with you, did I you? I felt like I was back in school looking over someone's shoulder. You know, I've tried to email you, my dear friend. Well, I find that impossible. Keep trying. My wife just dominates that computer. <laughs> But you do have an active cell phone. I know that. That is busy <laughs> on occasion. Calling in orders. Ramon at the free throw line. 62-44. Boy, that one just sliced through. Ramon with 16 points. Here's Omni Smith. 909 to go in this ball game. And the ball picked off by Antonio Graves. What a great read. He came from the top down to take away that baseline pass. That's just great coordination. 
63-44, double on Gray. And he throws it away. Over and back. Well, first shot action around the country. Jermaine Wallace here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. A game-winning three from the left corner with .5 seconds to go. Terrence Dials, 19 and 12 in Ohio State's win over Davidson. Mustafa Shakur going back home to Philadelphia. Yep. Great and return, huh? 17 and 9 in Arizona's big win over Wisconsin. And Dials has just been an unbelievable season as the center for the center of attention for Ohio State. Pump fake by Warzinski misses, but then the tip from Isaac Knight. Here comes Sam Young. Graves. And oh, my goodness. A headlock. Gray. You know what? Initially, he was right, but he gave it the uh, strangle at the end, Bird. This is a good rebound. Now, watch what happens with his left arm. Or right arm, excuse me. Look at this now. He doesn't let or can't get rid of it. Why not take him with you? A takedown. Give him a two. Yeah, it did look like a wrestling match. <laughs> That's just a shame. That's a terrific rebound negated. The jumper off the iron, tipped back to Omni Smith. He puts it up off the glass. Now he's got to keep him going the other way. Oh, an elbow by Krauser. Yes. Oh, my God. He got away with one. That is unbelievable. An elbow right to the face. Yeah, and none of the trio of officials apparently saw it. Well, in, in fairness to the official under the basket, he was signaled for a timeout. Never looked on the floor once the timeout. Oh, well, we got it. And the hands up to look clean. That's not a good basketball play. Mm. Take another look at this. Now just that arm now. I'll tell you what, that wasn't as bad as it looked initially. You know, I that? agree. I agree. I like the way he lifted. Let's see here. I thought we were in the land of the flying elbow yeah, there for a yeah. moment. Uh, see, there it is, though. You know, I don't know if he was just trying to get his arm through and made the contact. It wasn't of the malicious nature. Right. I must agree. So, uh, one of those basketball plays that is and are going to happen in the course of competition. 63-48, under eight to go. My apologies, <laughs> Captain Carl. Well, I had the same reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought look. it was a flagrant uh, violation. Well, and it's that's getting a little physical now, just a, a little nasty out on the court. Time is called. Uh, my apologies earlier to Carl Krauser because it, it ended up looking like a basketball play. But what happened? See there, there's one whack. And I watch the other now. And this is when he gets a little out of sorts. I mean, it, it, that's not the way to be a leader. He, he's got to calm down and be an influence in the proper sportsman-like fashion. And he's too talented a guy, but he does get carried away. Pittsburgh leads at 63-48. They have hit 67% for the night including 50% from three-point range and 15 assists on those field goals. Well, Carl Krauser, we gave him a little generous uh, nudge earlier, but this time he winds up going to the free throw line. And, and you know, the, the bench really worked on him. Uh, so Barry Morse and Joe Lombardi, and of course, uh, Orlando Antigua, they're part of the staff because they know he's energized. Uh, Chris Orlando with the bow tie thinks he's back in school. <laughs> but they know his personality. I mean, that kind of influence when you're aggressive and competitive, it, oh, it's great for everybody, but under control is the essential part of it. DeAndre Haynes guarded by Ronald Ramon. Here's Omni Smith, and there's LeVon Kendall. Battle for the ball. It's on the floor. And a hell ball, possession arrow goes toward. Tough to read that from without that uh, TV, is it? There we go. Oh, the eyes Kent are going. Yeah, Kent State. Well, Smith's really shown ability to get down the lane and be creative. 63 48, 726 remaining. A little mop up duty, and uh, now we're set to resume play. Nice play. 
double screen and pops out. Oh, what a look he had. Smith, however, they don't go away, do they? And it's a 12-point game. Smith has 10 all in this half. Here's Kendall. Graves wisely brings it back outside. I thought he should have made the did pass really. to Gray. Don't oh, you? okay. You know, if, if the choice. Well, they are starting to bang with these screens now. Ramon. Ten on the shot clock. Krauser gets the screen from Gray. Goes baseline. Warzinski. Good call. Can't go down. Unless they wanted to call the hell ball prior. But right now, I don't think Krauser is reading things as, as, as well because he gets into this thing emotionally. And here, they're just sticking with it, causing the turnover. Shot clock has been reset to 35. And, and a foul underneath on Warzinski. They got caught behind, and that's what big bodies can do. Step through, beg for the basketball, and you get caught on the wrong side. Tenth team foul, so from now on, Pitt shoots two. And what a run right now by Kent State. They have been terrific coming down the stretch. Critics say the new adventures of old Christine is laugh out loud funny. Julia Louis-Dreyfus stars in the new hit comedy right after a new Two and a Half Men Monday on CBS, America's number one network. Aaron Gray back at the line. 6.41 remaining, a 13-point hit lead. And Jamie Dixon continues to rotate players, getting fields in the game now. And they need some defensive stops off the dribble penetration. Smith. He can get in the way, can he? The dish, and Gray with the block. Another wrestling match. Bowser has it from Gray. And they don't need this. That's smart. Back outside, work on the clock. Now you love guys who will pry burn, but then use their head, right? Left side, LeVance Fields. Kendall finds Antonio Graves. He's guarded by Omni Smith. Six to go. Just good basketball. Use the screen. The screen usually gets free. And in this building, Bill Lambeer did it better than most, huh? Did Pick he and ever. pop. At the other end, that's a three. Timeout called by Kent State. Here in Auburn Hills, Northwestern knocked off Iowa this afternoon. Texas A&M defeated Syracuse last night. Montana over Nevada, a 12 over a 5. Milwaukee over Oklahoma. And Alabama defeated Marquette. First round upsets thus far. And our second game will have Kansas against Bradley. 67-54. And some pressure defense. Some changes gates on the floor with Mincy and Knight for Kent State. Guys that can really rag the dribbler. Jordan Mincy has the Vance Fields. Here's Kendall. Isaac Knight guarding him. And Knight's big on pulling the shirt after the guy screams. <laughs> Done it about three times. Fields, 5 13 remaining. Nine on the shot clock. There's the switch. Oh, they didn't even turn the ball over. Fields. Gray and a foul. Just the, side, the belly bump. I mean, you put that midsection in the opponent, keep your hands up. The officials won't call you for it. 11 rebounds for Gray. I mean, look at that, just reaching over the top, and that's what size can do. Jim Christian getting ready to send three fresh bodies on the floor. Aaron Gray, double double, 13 and 11. Those are very close to his averages for the season, 14 and 11. 
Go inside the secret world of special forces soldiers working undercover. The Unit TV's number one drama, Tuesday after NCIS, right here on CBS. Gray with one more, five minutes exactly remaining in this one. Gray perfect at the free throw line, five to five. And help uh, get a little rest now as Young comes in, probably a better matchup in terms of motion. He'll have more left. Kendall now goes to Warzynski. Haynes and Youngblood. Here's Michael Scott. Omni Smell, beautiful pass. How about that? And a foul to Boo. Boy, what a great find. I mean, that one was rifled inside. You better have your hands ready or you become a soprano. Oh, great chest pass. And Morzinski just turns the right way, gets himself set, and a good look. Because you recognize it as a defender. You look at the dribble, a case of penetration, and you forget to stay home. 69 56, fourth foul on LeVon Kendall. And the three point play, it's a 12 point game with 446 to go. And boy, sometimes you get that lead, you get lethargic mentally, you think maybe it's over, you lose your edge. And right now, Kent State, you know, they're steaming back, and he's done a lot of nice things from the sideline, Jim Christian. Levance Fields picked up by Mincy. There's the trap. And Krauser brings it back outside. Well, they stay right up on you. And a little nickel diamond just put the hands in. And they just back up a little. Gates, I believe. Armin Gates, it was. Krauser's back at the line. One more. Borzinski back. Jay Youngblood is back. Omni Smith back for Kent State. And Aaron Gray is going to reappear now on the floor, replacing LeVon Kendall. So it's Gray. The seven footer for the 6 9 LeVon Kendall. And Krauser shoots one more. Rebound, Warzinski. Switch on these exchanges thus far. Smith, oh, tough. falling away as he launched the three. Ball on the floor. Boy, there have been a lot of scrambles. This is a hell ball. Possession arrow goes toward Pitt. Well, you know how meaningful it is to everybody out there, particularly when you're trying to creep back into a game. Isaac Knight back on the floor now for Kent State. And Mincy picks up. Is also out. And Young and Kendall on the string here, back and forth. I don't know what they need at which end of the floor. More athletic Young on defense. 4:05, four, oh, four minutes to go. We got to post up, nice running jump. Graves. Looking for a five-second count. Look at that pressure the ball. Direct in now. He's got to turn and make a quick decision. Good. Oh, what a ball fake, Vern. Yes. And a foul is called on Scott. And Pitt's going to be shooting free throws again. State in this Oakland bracket first round game down in Dallas, Memphis, and Bucknell have already advanced. And Pittsburgh or Kent State will take on either Kansas or Bradley. That's our final game at the Palace at Auburn Hills tonight. Oakland bracket first round games underway on this St. Patty's Day. And Pitt back at the line. Antonio Graves 
Well, the top of the Mariners to you. Oh, oh, yes, and the Scandinavian put back to you. <laughs> and look at the bench. There is Barry Rorson on the right with a really bad St. Patty's top. That had to be a gift. And oh, he knows he's not. Look at him. He is. Well, look at Orlando Atiqua next to him. Well, Orlando felt like he was a, in a professorial <laughs> mood this evening. I'll get it out. Oh, they got a lot of. Slice gets a baptized deduction for that. He may. He loses per diem. Uh, this team is just hanging around. Look at this. Yes, Ryan, they are. Ryan Hayes to Youngblood. Jay Youngblood cans a three at 71 60 with 315 to go. Try not to foul. Now, they've been impressive, but don't put them on the foul line. Force them to use a lot of clock and maybe rush something and make a bad decision. Nice find underneath. Yeah. That was a pretty one. Uh, now that's that, the ability of three guards. You know, Graves being a two and a half out there. These guys can make plays. Krauser with eight assists in this ballgame. And there's DeAndre Haynes. A rebound again for uh, Aaron Gray. Three sixty, two and a half to go in this one. And yeah, milking the clock now. Defense a little more passive this trip. The last this shot, sort of reality may be setting in. Back outside, Krauser into the corner. Graves in and out. Look who gets another rebound for Aaron Gray. And along, King, the big fella. Seventeen points, twelve rebounds for Gray. The tip not there for Kent State. Warzinski goes down. Hell ball. Possession arrow, Kent State. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. Kevin Warzinski, 15 points on 5 of 10 shooting, and Aaron Gray, 17 and 13. Chevy, $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund for each school. Ramon and Kendall are back on the floor now. And that last play showed you the heart of Krauser, though. He's the one that got. A piece of it, he got a shot. He heard the raft of the opponent and ended up with that jump ball situation. He's got some toughness. Gray with the block. That's five blocks to go with everything else Aaron Gray has done tonight. Can't get this one, however. A nice little under the rule. They Nice job, Scott gets him under the rim in a tough situation. Time called, Kent State. 13 point margin. Monday on CBS, find out why critics call Neil Patrick Harris's TV's number one scene stealer on a new episode of How I Met Your Mother, Monday on CBS, America's number one network. 145 remaining, winner goes on to face either Kansas or Bradley in the second round on Sunday afternoon. Jamie Dixon, Jim Christian, respective coaches, See Josh Oppenheimer, one of the assistants, standing next to Jim Christian on the sideline. And Oppenheimer and Jamie Dixon have something in common. Northern Arizona and high school. Notre Dame in Notre Dame. Sherman Oaks, California. That's right. Haynes, tough shot. Ooh. Here's Krauser with the air ball. And he's starting to rush things, and it's slipping away a little bit. Kent State Golden Flashes from the Mid-America Conference. Pitt Panthers out of the Big East. You mentioned Gray with those five blocks. He's getting the blow right now. He's not a Mecca Okafer with his shot blocking ability. Right. But he's in the right spot. He forces you into tough situations where you can't use your legs properly to elevate. And he himself can get up. Fields, beautiful. Oof. The thick 15 point game with a minute to go. Jumper off the mark, chased down by Jay Youngblood. Now Kendall. And it's going to be pit against either Kansas or Bradley. And Penn State gave him a pretty good jolt there, trying to get back in it. And pit just a little too much of everything. Final 30 seconds to go. And the Pit Panthers will advance. Kendall 
slams one home and the margin is 17. The largest lead for Pitt in the game was 25 at 56 31. Whistle and a foul. And I believe it's on Kendall, and if so, that's five. And Jamie Dixon just almost did a knee bet on that foul. Now Pitt's going to go 25 and 7. Jamie Dixon in his third year came to Pitt as an assistant with Ben Howland. They had been together at Northern Arizona. And now Kendall is out with his fifth foul. And one of the crowd favorites, Charles Small, is coming on the floor now at 5'7. He's got the most appropriate name in basketball. Jamie Dixon was telling us yesterday that during home games at the Peterson Center in Pittsburgh, the crowd begins to say, We want Small. <laughs> well, he was also saying, How about the volunteer things he does around the city and campus? We're getting everything out of college. So Pitt advances in the Oakland bracket. They'll have a second round game here at the Palace of Auburn Hills against either Kansas or Bradley. Kevin Warzinski on the sideline now gets a hug from the uh, coaching staff. A heck of a job. That's nice, huh? Been together for a few years. Marcus Bowman is also on the floor as substitutions are made now. Nate Gerwig, who was the only remaining member from that Elite Eight team of 2002, did not see much action here in the second half. There's the only point guard Jim Christian has had. There's Gerwig, and DeAndre Haynes has also gone out of the lineup. 79-64. Ball will be inbounded now by Antonio Graves. Into the hands of Charles Small. He's picked up by Mincy. And Pitt is going to dribble out the clock. They will go to 25 wins for the season, and they're going to take on either Kansas or Bradley. We're going to go to Greg Gumbel in New York. This one is in the books.